What's up everyone and welcome back to yet another epic episode of Realize TV. Today we're back here in my workshop because it should come as no surprise, my car is yet again broken. Those of you who watch our show regularly already know by now that this car loves to break axles. Now our last event brings the final count up to seven of these and today I'm gonna figure out why. Now the interesting thing is the last thing I broke actually wasn't an axle. Damn it. It was this. It was an output shaft. A custom made output shaft made by villains that snapped right at the spline. Now the only problem is the other half of this is still sitting in the car. <sighs> so now I gotta pull it out. Always got to do the shake test. Yeah. All right. So the other half of that output shaft is right in there. No biggie. How the hell am I supposed to get that out? Mm -hmm. Please come out. <sighs> That's good. Ah, ah, ah. Looks like the only way this thing is coming out is if I hit it out from the other side. Which means I have to pull the other axle out. Which makes me so happy. Alright. Have I ever mentioned I hate working on cars? Okay, so I want to talk about theory number one as to why this car breaks axles. So a couple people have asked me if I'm running axle spacers. The answer to that is no, I'm not. And as you can see, there's a lot of play. Not a lot, but there's a decent amount. And the axle's definitely not being compressed. Maybe this is too much play. I don't know. Maybe. It seems to be like a quarter of an inch. But definitely no axle spacer. It makes me so happy when I pull out a perfectly good axle. It's not even broken. Perfectly good. So I have to pull it out. That makes me so happy. Okay. Now, I gotta pull out this output shaft. <sighs> Alright. Well, at least this one looks nice. I have no idea if this is gonna work. Wow, 
<laughs> that actually worked. Ugh. There it is. There it is, the missing piece. Now kudos to villains because obviously what they made held up just fine and what actually broke is the OEM piece of the output shaft, so definitely shout out to villains. Well, lucky for us, villains already sent us some replacements. Ooh, and these are painted. Okay. Oh my god, I almost made a disaster. Very nice. Okay, so another theory. People are thinking, okay, so you're breaking axles. Maybe it's because you're running like 265s or something. Guys, these are 215s, okay? And they're not federal RSRs, they're just the SS. And I run them at like 60 pounds. There's no way that a 215 is breaking axles. It's not possible. Maybe it is. Probably not. I don't think it is. Another idea, maybe it's because I'm running off-brand axles. These are O'Reilly's. The ones before this were AutoZone. That's possible. So maybe I need to make the change to OEM axles to be safe. All right, now one of the reasons for breaking axles that a couple of my friends have been accusing me of is they think that I've just been on the handbrake, just yanking it like no other, and then I've just been dumping the clutch with the handbrake still up. I got a news flash for you. That's a stock handbrake, okay? This thing has stock cables, it's the stock drum handbrake, and the pads are from 1989. This thing locks up like half the time to begin with. Now I've got my doubts that this handbrake is what's keeping the wheels from spinning and thus putting the power all onto the axles and having them snap. I really doubt it. Not to mention that you would blame me for such poor driving technique. Now to help reinforce my theory that my driving is impeccable, Nate from Villains Drift actually gave me a call right after Super D and gave me his two cents. I have an RB25 and I'm not making that much power. So Nate asks, do you have a laggy turbo? Yeah, I do. And I don't really like to show people this, but here's why this turbo is so laggy. Great, that's great. Oh, look at that, that is a restrictor plate. Mm-hmm. We had to put that in there because this turbo sucks. Anybody who knows me knows that this car took forever and I was really impatient and I got this piece of crap turbo because I was like, oh look, this thing's gonna look so cool. Top mount, blah, blah, blah. 
Well, now guess what? We had issues on the dyno, and we had no choice but to put a stupid restrictor plate in here. And basically, this car made like 380 on the dyno, and then we had to do all this BS. So basically now, the turbo spools at like 3,700 or 4,000 RPM, and the car only makes like 280 horsepower. It's great. Well, I think the answer might be, we changed the turbo. Lucky for me, Aha! Say hello to my little friend. Mm-hmm. That's a Garrett GTX 3076R. And maybe this is the solution to my problems. Okay, now in theory, if I don't have to deal with nearly as much lag and basically zero bottom end power, and suddenly with this guy now, I do have some low end power, in theory, I don't have to drop the clutch at 4,000 RPM like I've been doing. So this very well could be the solution to my problems. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I put on the Garrett, or should I keep this China POS? Now there are plenty of positives to actually changing this turbo out. Number one being, it's name brand. But number two being, I'll actually make more power and be able to keep up with my teammates. Number three, probably the most important reason is, it might fix my axle problem. Now there are some downsides. The downsides are, I gotta take this thing to Richard, it needs all new intercooler piping, it needs a new downpipe, and then it needs to be retuned. But at this point, I'll do anything to have my car stop breaking axles because I'm over it. I'm over it. All right, well there you have it, folks. I know this week's video is probably a little bit on the short side, but you guys can kind of see the dilemma that I'm faced with with this stupid car. Will my axles ever work? I don't know. I sure hope so. Let me know what you think I should do. Should I run the new turbo? Should I torch the car? I mean, um, uh, put new axles in the car? Uh, you know? I'm all ears. I don't know. But either way, if you guys enjoyed the video, or even if you didn't, you guys should like the smash button down below. If you guys have never seen any of our other videos, make sure you do that. Subscribe to the channel, because we've got a lot of nonsense coming your way. See you guys later.